Hey YouTube, this is Zach with Achilles Financial, and today we're going to be doing our earnings preview for STEM, which trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol STEM. This is a channel favorite, one that we've been tracking for an incredibly long period of time since it was a SPAC, and it has been a very painful journey indeed, down nearly 90% from when it originally, or I guess more than 90% from when it originally started, or at a minimum, the all-time highs when it turned into STEM. Now, this is going to be an interesting earnings report because Q4 is intended to be the largest earnings period from the company itself, as well as this is supposed to put the company in a path to profitability on an EBITDA basis, although still negative income on a net gap basis. So the question is, what are we expecting? What have they forecasted? And what should we be looking for? Now, it's important to note that the company has been very, very quiet. If we look at STEM news, there's been a significant amount of stock options that were rewarded based on the performance from last year. There's been uh, quite a bit of what I would classify as buys. I'll show some more info later, as well as some stock sales associated with that. But all in all, on the news front, 2024 has been incredibly quiet from a company perspective. This could be a good thing. We haven't heard a lot from the company this year, but historically when they've been very loud or they've talked a lot prior to earnings, it's been more of a distraction versus pointing to some of the great things that the company is doing. And they've used some of that good news to offset bad news, which have historically accompanied earnings. If you come down below, you can see some of the historical earnings and essentially all four of these were actually misses. The beat that you see here was due to a reclassifications of warrants, which caused this stock to showcase quite a bit more, or rather a much more comfortable net income, but it was really just a classification and an accounting income item. So the question therein is if I'm looking at some of the financials here in terms of how the company is performing primarily on the income basis, what we're going to be looking for is on the earnings side, or rather on the revenue side. So if I pop in here and I'm using Schwab to be able to showcase this information, if we're looking on a revenue perspective, Q4 is always the largest revenue time period. Last year was 155 million. This year, Q4 is expected to be in the mid to upper 200 million range, which would once again showcase very strong growth. And we're expected to, once again, be EBITDA positive. Historically, on a net income basis, the stock has continued to show large negative numbers. We're going to be focusing not only on that net income basis, but also we're going to be focused on the cash basis. Now, the reason for that is because, A, right now on a cash basis, we saw Q3. This is much lower than it was at the beginning of the year and we want to see that cash performing quite a bit better. One of the reasons why this has gone up is over the course of 2023, one of the things that we saw a, a large shift into is this cash and short-term investments, or rather the trade accounts receivable and accounts receivable. What we wanna be looking at for those accounts receivables is this number needs to show a material drop in Q4 and the cash pile needs to go up. And we'll show that from their, their report or their last earnings presentation or the investor day presentation. But we need to see cash go up because at this point in time, the company is still forecasting to be net income negative. And as such, we want to be able to evaluate, are they going to be able to continue to have enough cash on hand for them to make a profit and for the company to continue to be around? The second thing that I'm going to be heavily focused on is on this income statement. Do we have a clear path to profitability? At this point in time, the stock is in a very poor position from an overall pricing perspective, but there's two things that I think could materially move the overall stock price higher. We'll do the year-to-date view. Again, right now, the stock is around $2.70 after a poor week this week. One of the things that I'm going to be looking for is if we have a positive earnings, you can see on a one year basis, the stock has been in that seven to eight dollars range multiple times over the course of the past year. If they have a strong earnings, because I think that right now the stock's overall market capitalization of 400 million is incredibly low for a company that is forecasting 2024 revenue 
to be north of a or closing in on six hundred million dollars. I think that that is a, a large difference there. But that regardless, for four hundred million dollars, the company may have a hundred million dollars in cash or one hundred fifty million dollars in cash. So I still like the valuation there. That being said, if the cash positions deteriorating, revenues deteriorating could be a very different story. So regardless, if they have a strong earnings where they beat to the higher side of revenue, they've got a clear path to profitability, which I think is the most important one. I want to call out something here on the short interest. So you can see that currently, and this is as of the end of January, so there's a significant amount of things that could change over the course of the past month. However, a quarter of the company in terms of outstanding shares is currently sold short. So if there was a material move higher in the stock price, I would not be surprised to see that cause a run on shorts, which would cause the overall stock price to go up as those shares are returned at that new price, causing that stock price to once again move materially higher. So I don't think that the, the company is in a position where they could not do a double in a matter of the next four to six weeks where the stock price goes from $2.70 to closer to that five, six dollar range. At a minimum, I think kind of the December time frame where they were in the low fours to mid fours, I think that's very profit or probable if they have that strong earnings. And that again is going to be due to the short positions associated with the stock. The second component that I would highlight in terms of how the company could perform is just from an overall sector performance the micro caps in particular anything that's in kind of the russell has been getting hammered this year in a negative fashion as well as clean energy and i think that clean energy depending on the election results going into the latter half of this year could see a return to favorites in the end of this year going into next year and stem is a firm market participant in that area so there's a lot to like in terms of those two components there so now I want to take us over to the earnings presentation or rather the investor day presentation to call out a few other items. So this is the full year guidance that they released. We're on slide 25 of the investor presentation they released in November. This was after their last earnings report. But if I take us to the full year 2023 guidance, you can see on a bookings basis, which they've been killing it on bookings, they just need to deliver on it but we're expecting around 125 to 325 million, which is an incredibly broad range, but we wanna be on the upper side of that, which they've had very strong bookings numbers in 2023. But on the revenue side, the expectation here is that this revenue is going to be in the, or ideally in that 300 million range. I think if this is on the low side or under this 219 million, you could see the stock hit new all-time lows, which would put incredible pressure on the company itself. However, if we're on the upper side, again, in that 250 to the 300 range, I think it could bode very, very well because you would see that reflected in that adjusted EBITDA number. The other thing is there was a strong bump up in that contractual annual recurring revenue. And if this were to happen, which has software components of it, in the 20 to 30 million range this is going to showcase additional beneficial or benefits to the stock due to the fact that they have that locked in recurring revenue component especially if more and more of this becomes in a software basis the main thing is i'm going to be looking at this full year adjusted ebitda positive in 2024 if they can show how they're not just going to be ebitda positive but especially in the latter half of 2024 that they are net income positive, I think that will be massive for the company. That's not me saying that the entirety of 2024 is supposed to be net income positive, but in particular, the second half of the company. So that's something that I'm gonna be looking for on a go forward basis. And a lot of that is gonna come from this revenue build slide where the focus is going to be on this solar side, where you're seeing a lot more of the software really driving the gross margins and the net income positive side. Whereas if I am looking at the software over here on the storage, which is the much larger business side, it is incredibly strong gross margins, but we're not seeing that storage transition 
as much into the software side. And you can see that down below, again, in that supplemental detail, where the solar revenue versus the soft or the storage revenue is still not quite where it needs to be. So you can see on the nine months ended, in terms of the services versus the solar, you can once again see that 2023, 53 million is still higher than the much larger services side, which again is primarily coming from that storage component, or even here it's still coming from the solar side, but still heavily reliant on the storage, but not transitioning into the software side. So therefore what? Revenue expectations have been performing very well, but what we want to do is focus on the contracted backlog that you see here and how this can be transitioned into closed one revenue. So let's move on to the last two things before I close up. The first of which can be seen here on Robinhood. And if I come down below, one of the things that Robinhood has begun showcasing is these trading trends. And the one that I wanna showcase is this insider trend. The first thing that I wanna note is that at the in February and I guess January as well, but there was a large number of shares that were handed over to the executive team of STEM as part of their comp package. So much so that we are seeing nearly 300,000 shares that were handed as part of that comp package with some selling that some of that could have been tax focused. But one of the things that I would note is there is an incredibly large position that is held by executive management at STEM. They have a vested interest in the company. As such, I think that it's very important that the company itself continues to perform very well as the management team is heavily incentivized to take advantage of that. And you can see those shares, the market value, and when that's happening. And all of this is going to flow directly into how the company is performing. The second thing that I wanna talk about is Fluence Energy. And they are a direct competitor to STEM. And one of the things that I would note, and you can see this on a year-to-date basis, where they're down 40% with a large percentage of this really happening over the course of the past week and a half. But Orc, Blue Orca Capital, which is a firm that has released a short report on STEM in 2023, last week released a short report against Fluence relating to some lawsuits. It's important to note that if this shows a negative reflection on Fluence's capabilities to deliver on services, especially with some of their larger clients, that I do believe it would be directly beneficial to STEM if you continue to see some of this negativity. That being said, anything that happens in the industry is going to bode poorly for another large player in the space, such as STEM. So this is something I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna wait for their response. And they've released some material, but I believe that more will be forthcoming. But this is another example where I see that Fluence could have carryover effects to STEM. So therefore what? The three things that I'm gonna be really focused on is the accounts receivable, the cash position associated with STEM, as well as the forecast for the remainder of 2024, because this will be the first time that we hear about that forecast. On the current basis, I'm not expecting any wild news on profitability, but I do think that there is going to be a strong pressure for 2024 for them to have that profitability. But I'll be doing a review video when STEM is, has released their earnings and we'll be covering earnings the day of this Wednesday. So let me know in the comments down below your thoughts, what you're expecting, and if you have any questions, we'll be covering that on the stream as well. So thanks for watching if you made it this far and we'll talk to you soon.